You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 198 of Teach Better Talk. My name is Ray Hewart, and as always, I am with my all-star, amazing co-host, Mr. Jeff Gargas. Wow, Hi, Jeff. What, got, what got into you today? Well, you know, this is such a like uplifting episode. I feel like our guest, Kelly, is like the sweetest person ever and just doing such amazing things. I just felt inspired to be nice to you. Well, I appreciate that. I guess thanks to Kelly for putting you in the right right mood to be nice to me. That's awesome. Kelly this was a really it, it really was a great episode. Uh, she was fantastic. So, um, yeah, very 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 uplifting. I get it. Yeah, a lot of positivity. I'm good with it. I'm doing good. I'm good, Ray. I was a little thrown off by how nice you were, but other than that, I'm doing really good. So, so this uh, how- episode is coming out the day that I start school. I, yeah, how you feeling about all that? Like, that's obviously not today because we record these ahead of time, obviously. But, like, we were like, we're almost there. How are things? How are you feeling? Are you pumped up? Guys, you all know that, obviously, the fall has a lot of different mixed emotions. But I won't lie. I love my staff, and I found a mask I like. And I am just embracing it. I'm excited to be back in my classroom. I'm excited to see my colleagues. I don't know. I know it's going to be hard, and I know we have a lot that we're going to be flexible with moving forward, but I just have to say I there's a reason that I left my job, and I'm so excited to see my, my staff. And, and I hope that... Um... I hope that anyone, whether you're, whether you're going back to school, you know, on this day, like like Ray is, or if maybe you got a week or a couple of weeks or maybe even three three weeks or so, I mean, a lot of schools are pushing back, but you're in the mix of it right now. I hope that you can find, you know, through all the mix of the unknowns and the worries and like that, I hope you can still find that excitement, that passion that you have. And that's what I, I think what's given me me hope right now is I'm, I'm talking to so many educators that are like, look, there's a lot of unknown. Uh, yeah, am I worried about certain things? Yes, I'm worried about a lot of things. I'm still trying to figure things out. But I love kids. I love the people I work with. I love the community I serve. I love what I do. I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go back. We're going to figure it out. And I think, I hope everyone listening knows like you got this. There is no other, uh, I think, group of professionals that's better prepared for the unknown right now than teachers. You guys have been preparing this your entire time. You make more decisions on the fly with limited uh, limited uh, support, limited funds, everything like that on a day-to-day basis your entire career. I think you're ready to go here, and I hope – I hope that you're you're grabbing your passion, let your why, and that you know your love for your kids really drive you through all this, um, uh, just these difficult times. And and Ray, that's what I've heard in you when you're like, yeah, there's this, this, and this. I'm trying to figure all this out, but I'm pumped up because I found a mask I like. Like, that's yeah, good. I love that. I love that because you could be like, I gotta wear a mask. No, you're like, I found a mask. I love it. It's super cute. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna have fun and 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 do what you do and and do the best you possibly can in a situation that you don't have a lot of control in, I think is, is really important. You know, Jeff, I've seen a lot of cute masks, but I don't know that I would describe my mask as cute. Don't you, do you know me at all? You think I'm wearing a cute mask? Is it just, is it just like straight black? Of course like a black it is. Mask? You know That's me? Figured, of course yeah, yeah. I'm wearing a black mask. It's like, come on. It's like the Ray outfit uniform. <laughs> just black mask, black, black, black dress, black shoes. Good to go. Okay, I might put on brown shoes, not to brag or anything, but I'm gonna vary okay. it up. Well, you know, whatever. That's you know, I you know, I, I'm I'm out of my element now. I'm out of my league of trying to figure out whatever you're wearing. So, uh, I'm just glad you found a mask that you like. That's that's really where I'm at, Ray. We are gonna be fine, guys. If you are struggling <laughs> with something, if if it's an instructional practice, reach out to us. Let us help you. If it's a mask hunt that you haven't found one that you love, like reach out to us. We'll help you. If you just need a cheerleader, a support system, reach out to us. We're happy to help. And it's not just us, like Jeff and I, but it's the whole team. It's a whole network. It's a whole yes. family. Whatever you need right now. Just let us know, and we'd be more than happy to find some way to make you feel a little bit better today, and hopefully a little bit better tomorrow. And uh, we're we're gonna get through this. No stress, guys. I'm excited that we're kicking off the year, and there is a lot of new school year excitement. Even though it's different, it's still awesome. And and Ray said, like, if you need a cheerleader, I got you. I got pom poms. I'm ready to go. You have pom poms. So just give me a holler. Well, my daughter does. What color pom poms does Jeff Gargas own? 
Well, my my daughter has pink pom poms. Okay, she really Jacqueline wants to be is a the cheerleader. best. She's the she best. is the best. So I will tell you this: if you need it, if you need that pick me up, you tweet at me, you let me know, and I will get her on camera with her pom poms, telling you you got this. I actually would rather like to see you with the pink pom poms. <laughs> that happen? Well. That might happen. We'll see who tweets at, at me and, and, and how I'm feeling the day that it happens. Guys, so. do not listen to the rest of this episode. Pause this recording and go <laughs> tweet at him. I kid you not. If you're going to show up for me the way I try and show up for all of you, go tweet right now and then come back to this episode because Kelly's fabulous. Okay, so moving on to Kelly being fabulous. So our guest is Kelly Pascarella. Uh, Kelly is a 16-year uh public school uh, veteran teacher and leader. Uh, she's taught grades K through eight. Uh, she's served as a, as a gifted coordinator for grades K through five. Um, she is currently a doctoral student uh, and, and working in that as well. Uh, she also is the founder uh, and the creator of the website elementaryblueprint.com, which we talk quite a bit in this. We hype it up. Uh, I know Ray utilizes it. We talk about it. It's something you should definitely check out. Um, for resources and connect with others as well. So uh, really great episode. You already touched on it. She's just super positive. She's so much fun. She just brings a certain light to to just, I know it's not video, this is just audio, but there's still like a light that comes through, if that makes any sense, um, that she just kind of makes you feel good and, and gets you excited about what she's talking about. So I really enjoy this episode. I'm really excited to be connected with Kelly. Ray, anything else you want us to pull out of this episode? Ah, oh, just I love Kelly's piece of advice at the very end. Make sure yes. that you have a post-it ready and a yeah. pencil out because you will want to take this one down. <laughs> that is so true. And with that, let's get into episode 198 with Kelly Pascarella. All right, we are here and we are chatting with Kelly Pascarella. And Kelly, it's so awesome to have you on with us right now. We've been talking a little bit beforehand. We're already laughing. We're already having a good time. So that always gets me excited and pumped up for the the episode. Uh, really excited to kind of dive into your head, get to know you, get to know your story, uh, and to, to learn and grow with you. Before we get too far into that, how are you feeling right now? I feel great. I, I, I mean, I'm all over the place, actually. <laughs> we had, um, uh, today our, our plans came out for the, for the opening of the school year. Okay. So I, as a parent, I feel, I feel for my kids. I have a kindergartner and, and a second grader co coming up this year. So I feel for them that they won't get to have the whole, the richness of the in-depth experience in person. Um, but I also understand like the, the demands of everything going on behind the scenes. I worked all summer on the instructional team for developing an online academy for our district. And um, I just see how complex it is trying to serve everybody and, and provide quality education with all the, the strings that are attached to every decision that's being made. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of right, right in the middle of it as a parent, as a mom and an educator, and I'm just trying to keep a positive attitude going forward because I think that's all our kids need, you know, from us. They're, they're looking to us for our reactions and what we give them. So I'm just trying to keep a positive attitude moving forward this year. Kelly, I love your positive attitude. That is so awesome. <laughs> so for our like listeners who may not be connected to you yet, will you kind of start by answering that kind of age old question of what do you do, Kelly? Right. Like, how do you describe the work you're, you're involved in? Yeah, I, I love that question. I do a little bit of everything. Um, I, I've served as a teacher for 15 years, so I'm starting my 16th year this fall. I've taught every grade from kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, as a permanent substitute and then as a contract teacher. And for five years, the last five years, um, prior to my current job, I was out of the classroom. I was a gifted coordinator. So um, among grades K to five, I wrote um, individualized education plans on the gifted end and um, tried to provide different enrichment opportunities for some really bright um, advanced kiddos across the district. Um, I was in charge of seven schools and um, trying to run the programming for that here in Pittsburgh. So I absolutely love that job. But one of the things I noticed in that job was just um, the inequity among resources and what, what teachers um, were, what teachers knew about in order to meet the student needs, um, specifically on the gifted side. But when you think about an elementary classroom teacher, they're in charge of every subject area typically, um, plus 
not just like teaching subjects, but they have to know all the social emotional side um, for English language learners for special needs. So you have to, you kind of get a mixed bag of um, abilities that you're teaching each year and you have to know the resources to support all of that. So um, I've done the, the classroom teaching, I've done the gifted job. And then um, I went back to the classroom and the last two years, and I absolutely love it because I, I miss the creativity of being connected to the kids on a deeper level. Um, I like being able to actually design the lessons and see the impact that they're having up close. Um, I'm also a doctoral student right now, so I'm in my final year. Um, Tomorrow is actually my comprehensive presentation of all the all of the knowledge I've gained so far, and I present my research, which is going to be a case study on on the website Elementary Blueprint that I've created based on the research. Oh, wow. so you're not busy at all. Good, Kelly. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so, <laughs> wasn't wasn't hard for you at all to carve out some time for us then, huh? No. Jeez, no. You got a lot going on. Congratulations no. on all the on the work and being so far into your doctoral and everything Thank with you. there. And so that let, that kind of led us into so you said you're you're presenting the research on the site that you built because of the research, which is a really yeah. interesting uh uh sort of Full, I don't know, bring it all the way around full circle there. So yeah. let's let's talk about elementary, elementary Blueprint. Can you tell mm -hmm. us about the site, what it is, and, and where it came from? I would love to. So um, when I was in the gifted position, I started a website on the side just to help parents and teachers um, have access to what I felt were the best apps and websites and books that you could order um, for enrichment needs. And, and a lot of teachers were accessing that. I had um, enrichment banks developed for every grade level. Um, and they were just kind of stagnant. There's a stagnant website of links um, for people to access who were just searching for more information. A lot of people always called and, you know, whether the kids had a, that label or not, it really didn't matter. It was just people looking to help their kids learn more, you know, in, in an area they were interested in. So um, when I started the doctoral research, I started to research um, open-ended research, open-ended resources, because I have a passion for equity in education. I grew up in a very um, small town, a very rural town, and we kind of had all different levels of income there. And then where I work now and, and where I live now is a very, um, it's a well-off socioeconomic area. And um, I just feel that no matter where you grow up, no matter who your teachers are, everyone should have access to all of the information out there. Um, so, you know, where I am right now, I, we have incredible professional development and we have speakers that come in and we have great opportunities as teachers to continue to learn. And not everyone has that, um, especially not everyone has the time to find all the resources. So um, when COVID-19 started, when we were all homebound, I kind of had this epiphany that we needed one interactive place where all teachers could access all of the all of the incredible educational resources that were out there. Um, There's so many silos, and if you don't know what you're searching for, you may not you may not come across a tool that's already been created for you, and can save you time and help you do better in the classroom. So I wanted to create this overarching umbrella that could house everything for a teacher. So I could log in and I could say, all right, um, this is my subject area. This is my grade level. Um, these are this is the price range I want to use. And we try to post mostly free things. But then I also want teacher ratings because the research proves that um, teachers trust teachers more than anybody else. So uh, you have to be a teacher to log in. Um, and that's where it's collectively kind of curated by professional educators, the people that are on the site using it. There's a lot mm. there. <laughs> No, that's really, really cool. So then, so, so free to sign up for, right? Free to get in, uh, registered for as, a, as a teacher. Yeah, it is right now. So right now, um, we are in the process of applying for a nonprofit status because we want, to, we want it to remain free for teachers. I, I think anyone who's been in the classroom knows how much they spend on their own things just to make the classroom as good as possible. Like I spend a lot of money every summer with bulletin boards and little trinkets for reward systems in the classroom and um, whether it's little whiteboards or just anything you want to do to make it more engaging as a teacher. So this is something that we feel like, again, going back to that equity, every teacher everywhere should be able to log in and say, hey, these teachers have the same mindset as me that I created a cool lesson. I want to share it on here and somebody else can download it and, and add it to their um, collection. Or I use this website. I'd highly recommend it. 
or I follow this blog, this blogger, I highly recommend like following them. And it's a great way to just share um, professional resources among us as teachers. Mm, that's really, really cool. So that's at elementaryblueprint.com. For those of you listening, if you want to check it out, we'll make sure it's in the show notes as well. Uh, very, very cool. So, so you know, uh, I think it's been a while since we've 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 gotten to the to talk about the success question, Ray. A lot of times, I always go to the the fail one. Sometimes we don't get the we have to cut a question, and it feels like this success one always gets cut. I want to be, ha- have Kelly be the first one for a while to really make sure we dive into this one. So, Kelly, can you share a story with us? about a time that you've had a successful moment or some success that you've had in your life. This could be something big or something small, but tell us what happened. Why was it a success for you? And then what'd you take away from that? So there, there are so many, there's so many stories here I could share. Um, I, I fail a li- like a little bit every day cause I feel like I'm constantly learning, but the the most recent success I had was um, having two people join me on the website work on Elementary Blueprint. Um, Nicole obviously stepped in as the chief content curator, so she's adding resources daily. And then um, another close woman in my life who is um, had got her master's in nonprofit business management, Laura. She stepped in to help me on on the business side of developing this work. I was kind of going at it all alone as a passionate teacher thinking, hey, we can change the world together this way. And um, just having people believe in it as well and step up and say, hey, I want to work with you on that and, and try to bring this to life to to help teachers around the globe together. You know, um, that that to me feels like the biggest amount of success right now. I think also when you think about what we did all spring with the remote learning, um, I think you know, I serve on a team in middle school. So keeping our team together and engaged in the learning was not easy. I think our district did it as best as possible. We had live sessions together and live team hangouts, um, trying to keep kind of trying to keep the energy up of the kids, even though they knew it was the last quarter, they were going into summer. Um, I think we actually had a lot of success given that that was all kind of brand new to everybody. So I think those are kind of two, of, two of the most recent things that have felt pretty good. Yeah, Kelly, and I I have to say, I, I know that we're going to talk about you, and I, I know we're going to separate it from, obviously, the great work you're, you're doing uh, with Elementary Blueprint, but I love that your mission is just to help educators, and it's rooted in research, and I really love that, that model, that blending, and so uh, I just, every time I hear about it, every time I'm able to check out the website, I have an account. It was super easy to sign up. I just really value the work you're doing. I'm glad that this is a success because- I've seen it and been following it and and it looks like a, a huge success and like collaborative efforts. So I think that's awesome with, with all this stuff though, Kelly, cause like, geez, you're like the busiest person ever. What's like keeping you excited. What's like really fueling your fire in terms of like all the work you're doing and, and, you know, putting in all this, this time and effort. Um, what, what really is keeping you excited about education? I think what's, cool about this time. Um, One of the things I read in one of my doctorate books was um, talking about the mail system and how everybody used to have to rely on the U.S. Postal Service to to communicate, right? And now you look at how antiquated that is and how, you know, very few people use that. Like, don't get me wrong, I appreciate the birthday card I get from my 96-year-old grandmother every year. It's it's actually a huge joy. But if, if systems don't adapt, they die. And you have to, as educators, we know that change is a constant, but I'm so excited that, you know, as depressing and and hard as this time has been for families and and monetary reasons and hunger reasons and like on that whole end, we know that this time has been horrible, but it's also shed light on rethinking and reimagining what we need to do for our kids. Um, The stress that has now been put on the social emotional piece to help kids through, um, I'm it's brought out, it's brought to life, like the most important pieces of education. And also um, it's, it's really gotten me excited. Like I I have a colleague who isn't really big on technology and didn't really want to change much, even, you know, when some newer people on the team arrived and this spring, I think she was completely reinvigorated learning how to record um, a play that we did for our kids. And we all used our voices and she had her kids voices in it. And just, just hear, seeing people kind of step up and try new things is exciting during this time, because especially in education, it, you know, you get tired of all the change. And um, I like seeing people around me say, Oh, that's not so hard. Or I, I played around with this and I figured it out. I mean, that's all it really is. 
you know, playing around and trying to figure out new things that can engage the students. I saw Dave Burgess posted a, a link today to a Floors Hot Lava game, which is great, you know, as a great introduction to like classroom rules and, and, and you can do it digitally or in person. But with that being such a popular show on Netflix, I thought that would be a great I can like I can easily adapt that for my classroom to start the year and immediately it's a relevant thing for the kids. So I think just all the sharing, all the all the adaptability that teachers are going through right now, it's difficult as it is. It's also a, that silver lining of all this. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I love that. Absolutely. And I saw that same post and it was a oh. great read. So for everybody listening, go find that blog um, because they do great work and there's always great authors that are contributing new ideas. They're super good. Yeah, I agree. So Kelly, what's one piece of advice that you have for educators? You know, usually we ask about new teachers, but the reality is, is kind of, we all feel like new teachers right now. Everything's a little bit different. If you had one piece of advice that you were going to share with educators um, to just continue to reach their students and and do our best work, what would that be? Um, When I switched schools, when I switched out of the gifted position to the middle school where I teach now in my home district, I... Um, the first woman I met, she has been a science teacher there for about, probably she's maybe got two or three years left until retirement. So she's probably been there at least 30 years. And she was the kindest person. And the first thing she told me was, find your marigolds. And there's a story floating out on the internet how um, marigolds are used to help other plants in the garden prosper. And, and um, you plant them around, you know, purposefully. And it's kind of the idea of surrounding yourself with people who have the same attitude as you um, in school. Like it's so easy to get bogged down with the stress of the day or parents or the weight of the workload, all the grading and everything. Um, but if you have people around you, like I had Nicole all year and, and she was constantly bringing in new ideas and, and creative, um, creative plans that she had done in the past. And it's, I would say find those marigolds, those teachers that are, that you look up to. For me, now that I'm kind of midway through my career, there's people older than me that I admire. And I um, try to go into their classrooms and just kind of see how they arrange their walls or see how um, they talk to students, kind of observing all those little tips and tricks that they have. And also now for me, it's younger teachers, you know, it's teachers fresh out of college that I'm learning from um, that you know, they, they're more tech savvy than I am, even though I like to think I keep up with everything. It's, it's pretty cool to find those people that, and, you know, take the approach that you can learn from everybody around you. Um, and the people that, you know, if the, if the faculty room is toxic, stay away from it. It's, you know, you don't have to eat in there. Yeah, um, try to find the people that are like you and kind of remind you of your why when you get into the classroom. I love the marigold analogy. That's such a great, <laughs> such a great story. If you guys don't know that one, you got to go look that one up because that is a that is a very relatable and special story. Great advice. Uh, so let's let's have some fun here. Let's do the next six questions, and your goal is to answer each one in fifteen seconds or less. Are you ready? I'm ready. I think I can All do it. Right. All right. Uh, what is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? Definitely elementaryblueprint.com. We're <laughs> gonna. I'm going out there. Um, every time I log on, Nicole, there's already new things being added, and you can filter by grade level and subject area. Also, YouTube, but we all know that one. I just taught myself a Bitmoji classroom this summer from a video, so that was awesome. Um, so I have a Bitmoji page ready for my kids to come back to, and I'm excited about that. Yeah. Uh, give us a book you're reading right now. Um, aside from my doctoral books, um, a Cresswell and Poth book I'm reading, it's qualitative research. I am reading a book uh, by Samantha Powell. She was Obama's um, foreign advisor um, during during his like during his administration, and she has such an amazing life. She's a mother, but she's also been around the world, and just the inequities that she's seen in the world put a lot of our uh, our, our luxurious life here into perspective. Um, I just love reading from intelligent people. So the book is called The Education of an Idealist by Samantha Powell. Who do we need to follow on social media today? You can give us up to three. Okay. Um, At Elementary Blueprint, you can follow us right now. Um, Teach better. You guys are great. I already follow you. And then uh, my favorite right now is The Holistic Psychologist. Um, It's the.holistic.psychologist. And it's because I believe if you are... If you're happy between your own mind and in your head, then um, if you're full kind of in your own life, then you can help serve others as a teacher. 
she's my favorite. <laughs> Give us a, a good YouTube channel or website for educators. Um, I, um, I'm in liter ELA land right now for all the ELA teachers. And I like Cornell Rip. She started the Global Read Aloud. Most ELA people know her, but she had a great blog. I think she's taking a little break for a while, but she just always comes in with a fresh perspective on the times and, um, and relating it to literature and how she shares current events and everything with her kids. So Pernell Rip is great. And then um, Shanahan on literacy, he is a, a, a reading um, professor and he talks about the research behind reading and how to make kids succeed. Uh, give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Uh, I think the first one would be figuring out how to reward your kids. Um, knowing, you know, just with all the stuff we have to do as teachers, you got to know what your systems are to help that keep it positive with them um, so they can work towards some good things. And also take care of yourself. Find time every day. I do it first. I wake up early and I run. And that's kind of my solid me time. It's music. It's something like a podcast. You know, take care of yourself because you can't help others without helping yourself. And lastly, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? I have this one written down around my house. Um, my dad says, Frank Kovacs, his advice is happiness is between the ears. Um, you know, a lot of what you think, what you tell yourself, what you believe is comes true. So if you can think positively and tell yourself good things and find the good side of things, then that's pretty, pretty true in your life. That is oh. such good advice. I love that so much. I like, do too, Kelly. Oh my gosh. So yeah. perfect. Yeah. He's a, he's a modern day Buddha. <laughs> Happy <laughs> years. I love him. <laughs> he's a great that, guy. Yeah. That is absolutely something that I can imagine like having uh, a note, like a post-it note on my desk with that reminder, like, or like a piece of artwork that shares that. I think that's so powerful. So powerful. Yeah. We do need to make it into some artwork. <laughs> You're absolutely you right. Let's do that. It's better than a post-it note, you know? Yeah, I guess that's fair. I'll, I'll do the post-it note for now, and then we'll get some beautiful art piece that then we'll all make sure is in our office. That we'll just, it'll be a stand-in. You know what I mean? We'll, just, yeah. we'll take the post-it post note, we'll put it in a really nice frame. There yeah. we go. That works. It'll be, like, it'll be very, like, modern art, you know? Yeah. I'll work but, on it. I'll, I'll make some commission pieces. <laughs> <laughs> my free time. I like it. Yeah, because yeah. Kelly sounds like she has a lot of free time. So in her free time, she'll take yeah, care she of that. Yeah, she should do it. Yeah. That's what we do. There are some good art teachers out there that will get your dad's signature on it. So we, so then we have like a signature series. Yeah, I love that idea. I'll, at least pin, I'll, I'll pin it on. I'll put it on Instagram tomorrow and pin, pin it up there. Maybe <laughs> maybe it'll like it. maybe it'll go viral. I like it. <laughs> I'm in. Well, Kelly, I want to make sure that all of our listeners are able to connect with you and continue learning from you. I mean. I am so fortunate I have to have been connected eat before this podcast with you, but I just want to make sure our listeners also are checking out the work you're doing. They're connecting with the the organization and they're just making sure that they're, you know, hearing all the wonderful things you continue to put out there to support teachers, to help them be better. Uh, would you mind sharing how people can stay connected? Absolutely. So, um, uh, for elementary blueprint, uh, we're on Instagram at elementary blueprint and, um, we, again, it's all our, our website is all free. So the website is www.elementaryblueprint.com, and Twitter is at l m e l e m blueprint, and our Facebook page is also at Elementary Blueprint, and uh, our our YouTube channel just with some YouTube uh, tutorial videos on how to use the website. Um, it's pretty self explanatory, but just in case you need one, it's um, my name at Kelly Pasquarella for the YouTube channel. So um, we're out there, we're, we're getting out there. And our biggest thing is if we want all teachers to join in and make it a movement, we, our mission is equity. Our mission is sharing among each other. Um, we'd love to create a grid tab. We talked with our tech department today. So if we can share everybody's grids um, under one tab on there with uh, like on one of the main tabs, we'd love to do so. So we'll have to talk to you about that too. Oh, exciting. Yeah, it's a good, I know you already share them on Facebook, but also um, just to house some, some for all the followers. But there's a lot of places you can follow us, yeah. Very cool. And you know you can find all the links, all the resources, everything we mentioned about in this episode 
over at teachbetter.com as well as the really important links for connecting with Kelly and keep the conversation going for checking out Elementary Blueprints. So make sure you head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and a review, we'd really appreciate that as well. And let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and share this podcast with them. Kelly, thank you so much for coming on. This was a great episode. Super excited for people to hear. Super excited to continue to watch what you're doing with every, with Elementary Blue, Blueprint and everything you got going there and that movement that you're trying to grow and to just watch it continue to grow and, and do great things. So thanks for taking some time out and hanging out with us. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Dre. Until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better.